Hey everybody, welcome to episode 52 of the Legends of Tabletop podcast. Uh, we had some technical difficulties getting started tonight, but uh, it is what it is. But we're uh, Vince makes his triumphant return tonight. Hey everybody. And, uh, they probably didn't. Probably not. No. You're probably like two people that missed me. Hello, two people that missed me. <laughs> and uh, we're we're happy to have with us tonight uh, Stefan Picorni from Dwarven Forge. How you doing tonight, sir? Hello, everybody. Glad we are we got this going. Yes. Yeah, I don't not sure exactly what we had going on, but we're, we're worried uh, for a moment. Yeah, we'll we'll roll with it. Great. So. <laughs> All right, we uh, we have a we have a thing we like to start to show off with. It's uh, it's called something cool. So uh, be something cool that happened to you in the last week or so. So is uh, anything exciting going on for you, Stefan? Wow, jeez, uh, I, I I don't know. <laughs> oh yes, uh, yes, we just launched. Uh, uh, has been uh, launched on. Where did we launch it? It's going to be available the the DVD and Blu-ray. But what was that company that launched? <laughs> iTunes or no? What is it? Uh, um, I don't remember. What the it's hell? Did the, the email that that, that they sent it to everyone? <laughs> what the announcement? You look at the announcement in the in the wire in the wire. IndieWire sent out announcements to everybody about Dwarvenaut is going to be on uh, video right. on demand and yeah, it's going to be distributed by Film Buff. Distributed by Film Buff. And it's going uh, to nice. be available for watch and download starting August fifth. Okay, now available August fifth for August watch 5th, and okay. to download. Blah blah blah. So that, that happened just. <laughs> so, <laughs> who, we hear we hear a disembodied voice. No, who is that? Uh, this is Nina. Who's always, Nina. Why don't you come over here? And say hello. There's Nina, who's uh, the Hi, only <laughs> one in the office these days. We are, we're working a, in a very small, small ship, low season uh, hmm. of our production. Everything is now happening in China. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, like we, we developed the, the prototypes for our castle. Our castle Kickstarter, and mm. and uh, now we work on the internet with them, uh, perfecting all the prototypes on their end. Hmm. So okay. basically, uh, and my my partner flew out there to the factory, and every day we're on the internet, um, going back and forth with uh, what do you call those things you do? Uh, the spec sheets. Spec sheets. Okay. So Nina's doing a lot of spec sheets. It's all computer work, which I know nothing about. So uh, I find myself <laughs> lost. Oh, that's all right. On there, there's. <laughs> uh. Well, it's one less thing you have to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you? Uh, so are you still doing the original molds yourself, and then having those shipped over to China, or are you? We we uh, do the. We we do the masters, and then we we actually. Actually, rubber molds, uh, uh, piece, and even the original sculpture itself to China. Oh, okay. And then they, um, whatever uh, adjustments they need to make from the stuff that we've created. Okay. Cool. All right. On a very occasion, I, I actually go over there and sculpt in China if I need to. Really? I did oh. that last year. They don't want to do that again. <laughs> 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 Just bring over your, some of these pieces hand. that we did. Um, oh, okay. This is like curved, the curved piece. Uh, yeah, nice. Good cool, looks like a little tower wall there. Yeah. yeah. Little sculptures. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. So that's, 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 that's walls. The... Wall of stone. Yeah. Stone walls. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so that's the <laughs> that's the that's the that's the basic. That's where it all starts, right there. Nice. Yeah. Um, and and the, the so the uh, the city was what your your fifth Kickstarter. 
Uh, how many Kickstarters have we done? <laughs> All right, the Castles was the fourth. Oh, okay. oh, the fourth one. Okay. I lose track. Huh? So many My brain is scrambled. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you guys have been. I hear. I'm not. I'm not really the brain. Oh no! Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a sculptor. We have Nina and Nate, and we have all these smart people around me, and I just uh, dream up stuff and uh, take the credit for all the hard work. <laughs> I do some sculpting. Right, that's something. Okay. Yeah. All right. I do that's good. Do something. It all flows from your brain. Yeah. But it it's really has become a very collective. Um, there are other sculptors. There's people. We have lots of people from other parts of the the country who lend their really kind of a almost a, a fan based, a group based uh, production, you mm -hmm. know. And we all sort of all try to hold it together during the Kickstarter. But we have lots of help from a lot of them are fans who just want to help. Here we just manage to pull it together. Nice. And right now, we're in the process of pulling together the castles, but it's going to be hard work of getting it all figured out until, like, you know, January. So you got a nice little Dwarven Forge family. And you've been doing this for, it's what, 20 years old now? I mean, did you think you'd About be at this point? years. Yeah, do you think, did you think you'd be at this point? I mean, when you first started to where you are now, it's pretty... Never thought it would ever grow to be something like this, no. No, no. It was something I was doing for fun in my studio. Mm. And uh, just little by little, it just kept getting bigger and bigger to the point where now, now I don't even understand what's going on. <laughs> it's taking a Someone understands. Yeah. It's not me. I, I think <laughs> Nate and, and Ina, they, they, everyone understands except me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that's good. It frees you up for your sculpting. I don't yeah, I you know I have so many competent people around me that I just I, you know, um, they figure things out and they're like Stefano, we need you to sculpt this wall. <laughs> so then I sculpt the wall, and you know sometimes like someone like Nina, will even prepare the wall. She'll mm -hmm. sculpt a lot of it and then it gets handed to me and then I will finish it off. I, you know, I'll put some moss on it, I'll change a few stones, you know. But really, everybody has become so good. Hmm. Everyone around here has become so good at it now that, uh, you know, and they, and they know what I like. They know what I like, so they copy my, my style, so to speak, and, and we, we've all become, we, we, it's like a little Santa's workshop around here. <laughs> you know? Nice. But we don't have snow year round. It's just only in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is yes. So we have a lot of rats. No, in the summer would not be. Rat. We have a serious rat problem here in uh, in our new office. Oh, that's no good. But yeah, we don't know what we're going to do. We, we like they that. chew through the walls. <laughs> you know, it's like a Stephen King horror. Book. The rat, it's a, well, Lovecraft, you know, rats, rats in the Walls. Uh, that other horror guy, what is it? Lovecraft, yeah. Lovecraft, Rats in the Walls. Lovecraft, yeah. it's like a Lovecraftian situation here. They, they, we have this tin where we keep snacks. They actually pried the lid of the tin off and ate all of our snacks in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you could teach them how to sculpt, and it's a win-win for everybody. You could, yeah, you could do that. You could also... Uh, well, if it's Lovecraftian, you get some ideas for a Lovecraftian Kickstarter. You know, we, we you know we put rats. You know, we have them in our Kickstarters. We we have I, we make rats. I we I, make rats I have a little. We, I have a little rat sewer system. When they yeah. want to come to us, and you know, <laughs> it, it's really like some kind of weird horror movie where once we started sculpting these rats and putting them. In our pieces, they, they all start coming to us. Mm -hmm. Like the Pied Piper. Good modeling, maybe. <laughs> we 
what, what, so you were making making uh, terrain on your own for your games and stuff at home. What was the uh, the impetus behind you to kind of kick it up a notch and go, hey, you know, we can, you know, maybe we can make some money doing this. So, you know, what what was the kind of got you into motion? Look at my. Oh well, yeah. you know, um, I was making them out of cardboard. It all started because I really liked the miniatures. I was collecting the miniatures and painting them, and oh, then but there was nothing to to put them in. So I uh, I started sculpting. I was I was doing some work for these the, the companies that, that uh, do like little uh, lighthouses and uh, you know little things you see at the airport and. Oh, uh, there he goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It must be the rats. <laughs> they got to them. No. They, they chew through the Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> fuck balls. Edit well, that out. Well, they'll, they'll, we'll wait for them to, to jump back into the call here. <laughs> All right. That's that's pretty funny. God damn it. This has been cursed from the get-go. It is funny, though. It makes for uh, good anecdotal stories later. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah, that the rat I just showed you—it's it's pretty cool. That, that came as a little surprise thing in the pouch with the the sewer the sewer set. Cool. Which the few viewers that we have, uh, if you tune in sometime later in August, you will get to see the live action five uh, E campaign that I plan on running with the sewer uh, tile sets, from Dwarven Forge. So that's exciting. And some of the other sets as well. Yeah, I have a I have a whole uh, whole idea for some stuff to build, so it'll, it'll be interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll um, have a, a rogue trader campaign coming up once uh, the campaign I'm I'm in with uh, the Dragon Fisters podcast wraps up. We're rapidly yeah. approaching a conclusion, um, yes. so we're gonna we're gonna kick it into uh, rogue trader gear. Neil, who's running our Fear itself game, is also going to be running a rogue trader game. So. Should have a lot of games coming up, we hope. Yeah. Enough to uh, have a decent, consistent content every Monday mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for your uh, listening pleasure. Yep. This uh, this next week coming up, we'll be dipping back into the uh, the, the well that is Nerdbound and uh, following up with the second adventure of uh, Death Watch uh, run by Dawn Steele. Uh, you can find him over at the RPPR forums. I think he's still active on there. PP. Sorry. <laughs> this is juvenile, I know. You got it. <laughs> expect anything less? No, not really. <laughs> All right, I, my vet called, so I'm I'm actually going to listen to this uh, to this voicemail oh, here. Ah, there we go. Oh, maybe I'm not. We thought, oh, we we thought maybe the rats got you. <laughs> we. <laughs> My God, we have. Uh, we're, yeah. we're back. Yep, we're back. We're, back. Yeah. we're, we're back. still alive. <laughs> still alive. We're still here. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what were we talking about? Uh, I was asking about you how you got into mm -hmm. going from you know sculpting and and doing stuff at home to transitioning into hey let's you know we can maybe make some money and and you know get some sculpts and and start with Dwar the Dwarven Forge as a, as a company. Well, um, you know, I, I had some prototypes made, and we I got a little 10-foot booth at Gen Con, and um, I, I had just like a what we call a room and passage set and a room set, and we laid them out on the table. And uh, when the doors opened, people just swarmed our booth, I guess because I put an ad in the Gen Con booklet, and it showed this massive 3D dungeon, so everyone was like, ready to come to our booth. And they came and swarmed our booth, and in four hours, we were sold out. Nice. You know? So then we have, like, you know, four days left. What are we With doing? No, no merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we took everyone's names down. We promised them when we get a new batch, we will send more out. And uh, it just kept going, you know? And then I remember the first batch we got, we used to have these little bow tie openings that we fit little bow ties to put the pieces together mm -hmm. and 
they didn't fit quite right. So then we had to, in emergency, we, we remade the bow ties uh, and sent little packages of these bow ties to everyone who had bought our products. So everyone got a little letter saying, oh, we're sorry, here's a little bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are all kinds of, oh, man, over the course of 20 years, so many difficulties. There's just always something going wrong, and then you have to fix it. And, you know, people that are that are new in this terrain business, I don't think they realize how hard it is. There are all these little things that happen that you don't really realize could happen, and we've just about seen them all, you know. And, uh, but now we've got it down pretty good, you know. Yeah. And, uh, what a nice role. I mean, I've been working with the, the same, you know, people for 20 years, so we've we've gotten pretty good at. It. You've worked out all the. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, now we start to do new new things. So, like this castle, well, the city builder was new technology because using pegs, mm -hmm. sliding walls <laughs> and pegs, so that was new. And then the castles now we have magnets. And it's you know curved walls and, and 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 will the magnets attach correctly and so we're going through a whole bunch of testing of magnets right now and that's new so we're we're in uncharted territory in a way we used some magnets last year but now we have then we're using new substances like now we're using uh, not just dwarvenite but gorgonite <laughs> gorgonite a little bit different hmm. and it doesn't weigh as much but oh, okay. we wanted to. We want it to weigh something because otherwise it, it doesn't feel right. So yeah, we're, uh, we're adding weight. So these are all these things that we're behind the scenes we're working on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, uh, you know, we'll um, figure it out. Cool. <laughs> Uh, how long do you? How long from you know, say end of Kickstarter, you get all your orders in, and you know, money clears and all that kind of stuff. So from there to fulfillment, how long do you expect that to take? Till when are we delivering? In in, uh, in a, a January or February? Or, it, it's almost a year. It takes hmm. almost a year. You know, uh, and the shipping takes about one or two months. So we're really working up until like one or two months before people get their stuff. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, I'd imagine it's quite a bit of work. Yeah, yeah we, well, people think we're, you know, we're working all year long, you know, um, but they only see the 30 days of the Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> 30 years of Kickstarter, but, but we, we just continue working. You mm -hmm. know? Workshop and uh, In the same fashion, but we're continuing to do things we need to do. Uh, sure. And then, you know, just the emails alone, answering everybody's emails is something I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, is, think about it, if every email, if every customer that emails you with a question and you answer it, if that takes like 15 minutes, how many people is that in one hour? That's a lot. 15, that's like four. Oh, four people an hour, yeah. That's only four people in an hour. So let's say you get slammed with 300 emails. How many hours does that take? Well, that's a lot of hours. We have Susie. It, all she does is answer people's emails. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does other things. She does a lot of – but that is one of her, like, I mean, hours and hours every day just answering people's questions, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and some of them – just be like a question like, uh, so, uh, Susie, what's your favorite movie? You know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're really cool, movie. You know, and then maybe they email back and forth several times, but they don't realize that all this emailing is taking up so much time. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, when you have like 300 emails, you know? Uh, so just even when someone emails you back to thank you, that's another email you have to open up. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's these are the little things that people don't think about. You know. Yeah. Um, well, they all feel like they're they're part of the Dwarven Forge family, so they want you to, you know, give you all those warm fuzzies. <laughs> and you know, the you know you've seen during the Kickstarter is like thirty or forty thousand comments. I mean, there's hundreds mm -hmm. every day, and if for some reason you miss 
a half a day, people start freaking out. You know? Yeah. God forbid, you know, and there's only like a couple of us around, and, and God forbid we have to like do something that day, and we don't answer the call. People start, <laughs> they get angry. They get angry, like, why are you ignoring us? Why are you ignoring us? We're like, dude, I have to go to the market. <laughs> <laughs> I have to eat. I need to sleep. So we have multiple people. Multiple people, so if someone has to do something, someone else is picking up the slack, but we always have to have people there answering, uh, you know, so people don't feel like, like you know, we're not here, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, our fans, and it's a love-hate relationship. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, it, it really, we're, we're, that's our, one of our great strengths is our fan base. Uh, not only do they... They, uh, they put in a lot of money, but they also put in a lot of uh, love and energy, and they, they spread the word, and they, they give us ideas, and they, they help us. They do things like they help. They start helping other people. They start answering questions for us. They've become so familiar that mm. before we can even answer, like 10 other people have already answered for us. Oh, nice. And I just think it's awesome, you know. Volunteers. <laughs> Yeah, and you guys have, you know, great products out there, so, you know, people, and and you guys are responsive, so people really appreciate that, and, you know, like I said, they feel like they're part of the family, so that, that's definitely a, a cool way to, to run a business. We're very grassroots, and they are part of the family, and I, I just, it's incredible to think that all, we had, what, 1,000, 700 for Castle? Some, something like that, and and I think the average order came out, you know, over like a thousand three hundred or a thousand, a lot, a thousand mm -hmm. something per person. I mean, it just blows my mind. And then and then you feel this responsibility that man, everybody put in so much money, you know, that uh, you're really scared. <laughs> you're scared that God forbid if you put something up, you know. Yeah. 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 So there's great responsibility, and uh, it's wonderful when we can, when everything turns out great. And um, but the pressure, the pressure can leave you sleepless sometimes. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can only imagine. Kick Kickstarter's uh, one hell of a of an undertaking, especially, you know, with with stuff that you guys are doing, because you know, just for you guys to you know cover costs is already an astronaut astronomically high number and then you know add that you know 7.7 .7 million dollars on successful kickstarters i mean that's that's crazy <laughs> how many pieces did we make we <laughs> no, I mean, the scopes are, yeah like with 200 300 different types unique unique sculptures yeah really. look it up we had hundreds Hundreds, I think, a couple hundred unique sculptures, and that's a lot of work. You know, it's not like some people do a Kickstarter and they have one product, one product that they want to kickstart. But we actually have like like 200 some pieces that that go into the one castle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an incredible amount of work. Right. And people are going to understand that when they get the box and they have to unwrap. <laughs> Thousands of pieces out of the little baggies. Right. Your mind blown at how many pieces they have to unwrap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of the fun, right? <laughs> I guess, but after like your hundredth piece, you're like, man, why do they <laughs> baggies? We have people ask, like, why don't put bags on anymore? You know, but mm -hmm. that keeps them getting dusty. You yeah. Know? The factory can be very uh, dusty, you know. And, uh, you know, so it's kind of necessary, uh, but it, it, it takes hours to unwrap the pieces. Mm -hmm. You just have like a, a unwrapping party where, where your friends come over and you all, you all get a big garbage can or big box and you unwrap <laughs> all the pieces. You know? Yeah. Yes. Pizza party, you know. Mm hmm Oh, it's almost like when you when you're moving, you have people over, you buy pizza, you get beer, you just have yep. them unwrap pieces for a while. They they do that when they paint, when they buy unpainted and they want to paint. 
you have to have friends. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, I Brian, can't imagine sitting and painting that whole set on your own. It'd take forever. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just crank the Black Sabbath and get a case of beer and a... <laughs> well, maybe, maybe a case of beer is not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's okay in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Pieces <laughs> come out looking a little weird. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, um, so, so I, you... I get mine painted. What's that? I, I get mine painted, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I definitely order painted for sure. Um, so you're an accomplished, accomplished sculptor. When did you uh, initially get into art? Or have you always just been, you know, kind of crafty, artistic sort of person, or was it something that came later? Uh, I, this is what I was supposed to do. I, I was made to do that. And I, I was, you know, from a little age, I was always obsessed with drawing on stuff and looking at art. And from the time uh, they adopted me, they, my mother said I was always fascinated with art and they took me around the world to visit museums and churches and alter places you know uh, incredible things and that it, and, and embedded itself into my brain and then the only way I could they would keep me from running around was to give me crayons and so I was constantly drawing and then when I was in school I was constantly drawing on the tables and I was drawing on my jeans and I was you don't know how many times I had to stay after school with Clorox and wipe down as punishment to wipe down <laughs> all the drawing off the tables. And I kept getting, you know, sent to the principal's office and eventually uh, I got kicked out and I ended up at art school. Wow. And suddenly they wanted you to draw. <laughs> you know, that was I think fifteen or so and that that changed my life. That's all detailed in the film. The Dwarvenauts. It, it goes really, my life story is talked about in, in the film. Uh, but uh, it's more than just a gaming movie. It, it's about uh, sort of like a biography. Okay. Biography. And, uh, but I, so I always, I thought that I was here in the world to be an artist, to be a painter. And Dungeons and Dragons was my hobby. You know, that's what I did for fun. But painting and sculpting was my profession. And it's still, well, now it's become that my hobby has become my profession, and the art has now become what I do if I have any spare time, which is very rarely. <laughs> so, it was supposed to be just something to help, you know, make ends meet, but then it took over completely. And uh, hopefully in the future I can get back to painting and sculpting. Painting came first. And the interesting thing about painting is that you sort of, to be good, you have to transform in your mind the three-dimensional world onto a two-dimensional surface. Mm. So you're sort of warping your, your idea, you're flattening things out. Uh, so in order to be good, you have to sort of flatten them out. Then when I started sculpting, it blew my mind because suddenly – that wasn't good enough. That that was like, oh wow! Now I have to understand in three dimensions things I'm looking at, because one angle is not going to do. There's thousands of angles. So you you your brain changes, and once you can master sculpting with painting, now I believe you've become a complete artist. I think if you only do one or the other, you're only really half half of a master. I believe. Uh, just like in the two Renaissance masters, they, they studied all, drawing, painting, sculpting, or even the architecture, poetry, all these things. The, these You want to be complete, you have to study study how to do two-dimensional design, two-dimensional design, and also three-dimensional understanding. In order to be a good sculptor, it takes many, many years because you have to look at something and then in your brain, you have to sort of imagine it all the way around. and. And the beautiful thing is that when you get this understanding and you go to the museum and you look at actual sculptures, you see them in a way that you had never seen them before. It's a wonderful thing. You, you see nuances that uh, the layman doesn't see. In fact, you start to look at the whole world. You start to look at buildings. You start to look at streets. You start to look at landscapes. Everything 
you start to see them in a geometrical, for its geometrical beauty, so to speak. Mm. You know? Okay. And it, it really enriches your life. You know? Cool. And uh, I think that is why I've been successful in War and Forge is, is that I, I bring that to my designing of pieces as I think of everything in terms of color and in terms of shapes, geometrical shapes. And, and people find it pleasing, the end result, because of this artistic training, r real Renaissance type training. And, you know, we keep doing it. <laughs> And lucky for us. Yes, indeed. Um, is, do you have a preferred medium? Do you prefer sculpting to painting, or a, p a specific style of painting, or is it just you? You just love everything all together. I I love it all. I love them both. Uh, they one helps the other. One helps the other. So uh, what I find particularly fascinating, which I'm not good at, it is ceramics. <laughs> ceramics is incredible. I know people that do it, and that to me is like a merging of the two. Hmm. They do ceramic sculptures, and then they put glazes on it, and they put color. They add color to the sculptures, and I just find that particularly particularly beautiful. I, one day when I'm older, I would love to try to learn some of that. You know? Hmm. Uh, interesting. But Dwarf Forge, Dwarf Forge is really interesting for me because it, it involves both color and sculpture because everything we do, we paint them. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'm able to do both. So I, whenever when I'm sculpting things, I'm also thinking about the colors. What colors should be going on there? How is this going to look? What could we add so that we can add a specific color to that piece? You know, I think everything should look good. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize sometimes when they see these things that uh, we don't just paint these things arbitrarily to be like, oh, that's wood. It's got to painted to look like wood, or that's that, painted to look like that. We sometimes alter the colors for an aesthetic aesthetic appeal, you know, and that's important. Like, people might not realize why they like a particular piece, but maybe it's because of the aesthetic efforts that have gone into it. Because I, I think, you know, we're not trying to make little pretty things, but it helps to make them look decent. You know, and it, it's, you know, we paint them and repaint them and we, you know, we, we reject some things, we do them over and we, you know, we care about that they're, that they look good. Mm -hmm. It matters. You know? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, uh, you know, right. you can paint grass any number of different colors. You can paint bricks. Any number of different colors. I mean, there, there's so many different colors. So you have to find the one that's the most appealing, the right combination of colors. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, are you in any ongoing D&D campaigns with your love of miniatures and, and the work that you're doing? Are you uh, still able to get some games in or no? I don't have an ongoing campaign. Um, we have one-off adventures sometimes um, what what happens I'm, I'm so busy that then I, I get to play when I when I'm invited as say a guest to a convention and then I have to run like a couple of games mm -hmm. and that's when I play but usually just one-off adventures sometimes we play upstairs now we've been playing upstairs in my gallery uh, like once a week but uh, I don't actually use miniatures really <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not sure you're supposed to say that. No, no. Do tell. <laughs> they said that. Uh -oh. <laughs> they, uh, you know, I'm so busy that I don't have time to set up a table full of stuff. And what I've been doing, I, I came up with this thing called the Map Book, which is a, a book that has all my dungeons that I did when I was a, a, a teenager. Oh, until, you, you know, know from the time I was like four till now. So I, I seem to I seem, book. I seem to recall you talking and, and about that in, in the D and D experience. Yeah. Yeah. And no effort for me at all because I've already made the dungeon twenty years ago or thirty years ago. I just grab it and say, "Okay, let's see what dungeon will you go in tonight." <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's, That's cool. cool. Well, I, I was going to ask you, how cool is it to be able to play D&D on your own, you know, terrain, but yeah. I guess you're not. <laughs> Uh oh, he's frozen. Come back to us. Hi. Oh, oh. there he is. A big elaborate. They expect a big elaborate uh, performance and the thing, and that I have to work on for days. Hmm. Prepare for that and build stuff and rack. It's uh, that's a whole other. And and I. You know. Uh oh. Uh oh. If you think of football, there's like the if you and your buddies in the backyard, and then there's the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, two animals, right? Right. So, that's uh, you know, pickup game with no pads, you know, and <laughs> you're having a barbecue and people into each other and the kids are getting involved and people are falling down, you know. Or there's mm-hmm. the, series, the Super Bowl with all the pads and the media and the coaches and all of that. To- to- two different ways to do the same game, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, do you prefer one over the other? I mean, is, is the theater of the mind and not using minis um, more enjoyable I, I or an easier them, experience? I see them as two sort of two different kinds of games. You know, like sometimes I like to just have the lights low and I've got my cloak on and I just try to tell them the story as a storyteller, you know, but uh, that can't compare to like having an incredible setup where you've got like flicking <laughs> porches and uh, monsters, hand painted monsters. I mean, now you're instead of just using your, your mind, you're using your eyes. And your eyes are feasting on all the beautiful little details. And and it's helpful. You know, let's say there's like eight people or even ten people playing and you're fighting like 30 or 40 goblins. No one can understand where anybody is. There's just no way. <laughs> and theater of the mind is just madness. You know, you just totally make everything up. But uh, when you have the miniatures, you actually it, – it makes it a different, more complex game because now you can involve tactics – you can, you know, you have to be here, this, there. Oh, this corridor is only 10 feet wide. I can really see that I can't swing my two-handed sword there. You know, it 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 adds more for the people that they want to use tactics. And I I believe that if you want to go all out, that's the way. You can still do theater of the mind and some storytelling here and there. You know, mm-hmm. you can still do that. Oh, uh, it's just that when it's down to the fighting and everything. You know, I I found that uh, both methods are enjoyable, um, but people they really get blown away the most when you have a setup that they've never seen anything like that before, and then they're like, "Wow!" Oh yeah. You know, yeah. that really gets new people to come in and play the game, and 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 they they sort of take it more seriously. Mm-hmm. They take it more seriously. Focus in on on the table and special um, tools. Yeah. But, yeah. The kids, oh, the kids just go crazy. They love it. You know, I, I was going to the Brooklyn Strategist and I had 10-year-old kids, like a whole bunch of 10-year-old kids, and they just love it. And they're grabbing my miniature, throwing it around, and I'm horrified because they're dead <laughs> and my fears are getting broken and the paint's chipping off, and I'm like, all right, what the heck, you know? Which is why I like the Dwarven Knight figures. Yeah, I was about to say the Dwarvenite is pretty solid. Yeah, and and yeah. they're and they're rubbery, so that then there's no fear, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I wish those were more popular because they really are awesome, and that you could just throw everything into a a knapsack mm-hmm. and walk away, you know. That's right. how I have. Mine. And people no. really forget about Dwarvenite. I used to have a lot of resin stuff, but now they they really like. I see a lot of people now. Selling off their resin and buying Dwarvenite because they just realized that oh, I just love the fact I can just throw this in the bin and my kids can can throw it across the room and you know I don't want to say resin's no good because there are I personally prefer the resin but I would not unleash 
unleash them for the kids because mm -hmm. yeah. you don't want to throw. I keep those in the glass case for one game. <laughs> the, res my the resins for the adults. <laughs> yeah, the resins for the adults. Like yep. fine china that you keep yep. in your cabinet. But you bring it out to a convention. A I just throw everything in the suitcase. I can throw the door, but I literally just throw it in a suitcase. I have the, you know, the gorilla that that that's throwing it around in the commercial. Absolutely. You literally do that. <laughs> you open it up and everything's fine, you know. And then at the end of the the game, you know, when everyone's a little bit buzzed, you, you just throw everything back in the suitcase. There you go. That's actually a good hotel room. And that's a good rock market. And roll, you know. Yeah. Have someone dressed up as a dwarf and jumping on your suitcase full of dwarf and I train. Yeah, we should do a commercial with a, a raging exactly. dwarf. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Um, just, no, you're, yeah. You, you should totally uh, do that. The, brain, the, the wheels are turning. Now you're you're currently in the you're currently doing the, the castle the castle train now. Um, when you have an yes. ongoing my yeah. my when people get this in their hands. Hmm. They're going to, their minds will be blown because nice. we were blown away. We, we, it's hard to blow us away. I mean, I've been doing this for like 20 years, and this is unlike anything that anyone has ever played with before. It's just oh, wow. when you start building a castle and switching it out and changing it, and, and there's something way more fascinating about building a castle than just putting a dungeon room down. You know, dungeon room is cool. Don't get me wrong, but building a castle and towers and crenellations is just a whole other level of awesomeness. Oh, yeah. You know, and the fact that every Roger, you just take uh, – you can have a guy fighting at the top of the tower, and then when he runs down into the stairway, you can just pull off the side of the tower and see him inside the castle. That's pretty badass. And, and when he <laughs> keeps going down, you just put that – that piece back and remove the other side of the castle so you can see him on the other side as he spirals down into the basement. I mean, it's – no one's ever done anything like this before. No one's attempted to do anything. We're nuts. We're crazy <laughs> to have attempted. And That's a good thing. But we love it. it it's, we really pushed the, the envelope on that, and I think everyone understood that, and they hmm. stood behind it. 30 days, they got more and more excited, and by the end of the Kickstarter, I think everybody was like exhausted and also mm -hmm. just pleased, and they had all pledged like twice the amount that they thought they were going to pledge because because <laughs> they uh, they really believed in the project. And uh, if uh, if we don't come through now, there will be assassins at my door. Uh, well, they've already um, sent the rats. It works properly. <laughs> Uh, now, do you have the rats? The, exactly, the rats. Are the, that's the the scouts. Now, while you have the ongoing project, you have in the back of your head what you're doing for your next one. Uh, yeah, we're uh, gonna do uh, return to the basics for okay. Kickstarter one. We did done. We're gonna center a lot on let's improve the Dwarvenite dungeons. Okay. You know, things like uh, flickering torches, maybe those. some moving trap, all kinds of cool-looking archways and monster-looking fountains, all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of top-secret things that we're going to blow people's minds with. Um, I can't divulge the information <laughs> yet, but uh, there, believe me, there's, there's a lot there. Okay. Yes, we have a lot, lot of interesting ideas. Nice. Yeah, and it's going to be, we're hoping, what we want to do is instead of have 1,700 backers, we hope to get like 4,000 or 5,000 backers and not have everyone need to spend, you know, thousands of dollars. Now, let, let's see if we can get something cool for like, like you know, $400, you know. Mm -hmm. Everyone is, is pleading pleading with us not to make things that, that they're going to have to, like, open up a second bank account. <laughs> Take out personal uh, loans. Or is, things like that. They, they – because, you know, they, they want us – they want to be able to get something not on the grand scale castle. They need a break. 
So uh, we're going to do that. We're going to give it a break. We still have to try to hit like $2 million or so in order for us to, to be viable. But we can do it by getting more backers to spend less money on, on things that are going to appeal to everyone. Uh, we're going to have dungeons. We're going to have caverns. We're going to things to add to your city, things to add to your castle. But a smorgasbord, a smorgasbord, a cornucopia of all kinds of things. And uh, hopefully that appeals to a broader range of people. Not everybody wants a castle, let's face it. Not everybody can be a king or a lord of their kingdom. <laughs> I mean, I know there some people don't, they can't handle that kind of thing, you know? It's a lot of responsibility. Exactly. Yeah. The responsibility to be the kingdom of your, you know, the kingdom. So uh, we're going to notch it down and do like a more uh, for the uh, the less the ambitious, the less ambitious, yeah, yeah, dungeon crawlers. Yep. All right. Know? Cool. My favorite. And uh, we're going to have a lot of stuff coming out. Sweet. And I, I'm glad that we're not going to do something so mind-bogglingly difficult. It'll be a nice break for us as well. Because we almost all lost our mind. We literally <laughs> almost lost our mind. In fact, we probably did lose our minds. We're, we're, we're picking up the pieces now, putting yeah. them back in our head. and There you go. And not only that, you're handling the, kick, the stress of the Kickstarter, and you just moved. And a new we're always seem to be moving. <laughs> the greedy landlords, they keep raising their hands, and we keep having to move. You know, they don't understand that if they keep pushing creative people out of everywhere, there'll, there'll be nothing cool in the world, you know? Mm. We can't just survive uh, banks and nail salons, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Walmart we and CVS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not everybody just mega this, mega that. I mean, we, we need to have weird and wacky things in the world, you know? And that's what makes the world fun and interesting. That's and for sure. the greed, the greed. Ah, you know. Uh, well, that's a big thing with uh, gaming too. I mean, a lot of it's you know you've got Watsy and and whatever, but you know a lot of it's you know small, you know small folks like yourself, you know doing you know really great work, and and that's awesome, and that's a really cool part of our community as a whole to be engaged on that kind of level. Um, and you guys are super accessible, and you know your local game stores and. You know, some of your companies, like even, you know, Oscar Rios, Golden Goblin Press, it's, you know, it's him and a couple of people, and they're, you know, they're putting their all into it, and they've got regular jobs, and, you know, it's cool that they enjoy it as much. Yeah, it's it, it, it's such a wonderful industry, and uh, I've met so many great people, fantastic people, nice people, you know, and gaming is really something that, that brings people together. Brings mm -hmm. people together, and now the people of of my generation, I'm I'm 49. They now have kids that are growing up to like 15, 18 years old, and now they're playing with their kids, and it's a wonderful hobby to to now share with their children and 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 the you know father son father daughter type thing, mother son mother daughter, you know whatever. It, it's it's a wonderful way to to share in these. Uh, family nights, you know, things like that, and it's just, it brings great joy to a lot of people, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. I feel like we're doing something that, that's something positive, and uh, getting, getting these teenagers away from the video screens and around the table and interacting with humans, mm -hmm. and I think we're, we're entering uh, the Third World War now soon, which is the, uh, the war against the uh, the drones and the uh, uh, virtual reality, and this is what we're going to have to try to maintain our humanity through through this mental war, cyber war. Like, we, how can we stay human, and how can we st still keep this storytelling aspect of of human nature? You know, in the old days, we sit around campfires when we were cavemen, tell stories, and and then the, then the Renaissance, and we had plays, and, and we have all these creative things, and we're we're in very great danger now that people will just become drones, like they have they, they look at their cell phones now all day long, and and then when we have virtual reality, 
where everything's going to seem like, oh, I, I can live in this virtual reality world. Why should I want to live in the real world? There's a danger here, and I, I'm really, I'm a little bit worried about the future, the next 50 years. I feel like gaming could be something that could help us stay human, and I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely brings people I, together. And... Uh, yeah, I talk about that in the movie, and, I, and people may they think I'm a little crazy, but uh, <laughs> something to think about. Well, I mean, taking us to where Judge Dredd was. I mean, I remember reading those comics back in the in the 80s, and you just had people, you know, essentially plugged into into monitors, just wasting away. And you know, it, it seems like that's that's kind yeah. of where we're where we're headed. So, you know, gaming is is definitely. It, a, it is upon us now. It is upon yeah. us. Yep. Well, and, yeah. and gaming, like Very you said, scary. can can be uh you know one of those things that you know helps to to keep bringing people together and, uh, you know, in board games too and card gaming and everything. I mean, you know, RPG is great because yeah. it's, you know, it's cooperative storytelling and, you know, you can really, you know, just spin an epic yarn and you remember it for years and years. You know, you play a board game, you play a board game and it's fun and you have some beers and whatever. But, but uh, yeah. you know, playing an RPG just takes it to a whole other level. Oh, a whole other level of, of wonderful stuff. And and it's a, co a cooperative game. Or, you know, role-playing games, you're working together to solve a problem. You know, and this is what's a, one of the great things about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and, a lot and... of the, the parents that, that were scared of these kinds of games, they didn't realize that, that one of the great things about this is it teaches cooperation. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Solid math skills, you know, uh, break down those uh, awkward social, whatever makes you interact with people. Yeah. Uh -huh. More confident. Yeah. Makes you curious to learn things like history, economics, all kinds of things like that. Mm hmm. But you'd, you'd mentioned the Dwarven Knot a couple of times. It's a movie that, that's about you and, and about gaming. Uh, how did that come about? How did, how did that project kind of get underway? Well, it was. Uh, the thinking was originally, I had been approached by several producers uh, that were like, you know, you should uh, have your own, what you do is fascinating. You, you would make a great reality show, you know. <laughs> there should be a Dwarven Forge reality show. And uh, after like the third time they said it to me, I started to really think about it. Like maybe, maybe we're on to something. And uh, so... There was, uh, I started talking to people, and then uh, uh, this guy, uh, we had Nate, Nate Taylor, who was helping me shoot videos, these incredible Kickstarter videos, and he knew people in the industry, and uh, he connected us with Josh Bishop, who is a documentary filmmaker, you know, and Josh, so the thinking was, oh, Josh will come in and he'll, he'll shoot a sizzle reel like a 20 minute sizzle reel or something, you know? And uh, he immediately came into our world and within a few days he, he became convinced that, that, that we should not do uh, this TV show. He said that you're doing a disservice to yourself, Stefano. Really what needs to be done is a movie. Uh, <laughs> but doing it, if we could, it's better, it'd be more substantial. You're going to be made fun of in, in a uh, um, TV show. It's not. It's just going to be funny and then a wag, but like a jerk or kind of thing. But but what you do, he became obsessed with it in a way and said, you know, really, the life story and the message here should be bigger and better. And after a while, he just convinced everyone that he, he wanted to make a documentary. So that's what happened. It grew into a year and a half of shooting and wow. uh, into this memory, and uh, hmm. he did an incredible. He did a piece of art. What he created was was artwork, and it's a, I was blown when I saw it. I, I thought, wow, I, I didn't expect anything like this. This is incredible. And and he did all the music for it as well. He composed uh, music. The whole thing is is composed by him. He's a, a musician, so no. he composed all original songs and. Uh, that's on one one of the wonderful things about it. It's a very deeply personal film, I believe. It has a soul, a heart, and I think people love it. And 
and not just gamers. It's not a movie just for gamers. It's the general people of the world will like this. You could not know anything about gaming and you don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. You will see this movie and I think you will you will be emotionally moved. A lot of people cry, you know, in the movie. It, it's very moving. And uh peop you know, uh what is it? The Indie Wire and uh Rolling Stone magazine and all these other outlets, they they've all said a lot of great things about it. You know, we've got a lot of the reviews have been very favorable. Okay. From the real world. You know. One of our worst reviews was from a geeky, a geeky outlet. <laughs> Forgot what. I'm like, come on, man! You of all of all guys, you should be saying how you <laughs> like the film. But in fact, the geeky one didn't like it, but but the real world people liked it. So I don't know. Yeah. Same team, Probably same team. Game. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you would think, but. You know. <laughs> Well, you always it's get that, I guess. I can't complain. You know, it's it's overall it's been just fantastic. So you know, like with twenty good reviews and one medium review, it's fine. You know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, you're gonna get that in every crowd. I, th I think he's. I was a nerd. Yeah. I know. Of course, I am. You know. <laughs> so. Uh, but you know. It's going to be out there, and I, I would say it uh, at a film festival on the big screen. It was shot in 4K, the latest, most beautiful uh, high-resolution technology. So it's beautiful on, on the big screen. Shots of Venice are out of this world. You know, uh, we go to Europe. We go to Europe in the movie. So. Okay. Oh, there's Italian. So we go to Italy. Nice. You know? Good deal. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, I, I think we're we're just about wrapped up. We do have a a thing we call the final five. We've got uh, five yep. geeky questions to ask you. Uh, you can either answer just yes or no, or if you want to, you know, get into uh, the well, reasons why or whatever, we can do that too. <laughs> so we'll, we'll fire away at the first okay. one. It's Star Trek or Star Wars? Oh. God, that, that's a hard one. Uh -oh. uh, I love them both. You, know? you can totally but pick both. They yeah. seem to be two different sci-fi worlds, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Star Wars, things are all kind of messed up. Star Trek is sort of like the perfect world, right? Like this, this is how Starfleet would be if it was perfect, you know. The, I don't know. The, the the uniforms are always crisp. <laughs> and uh, Star Wars, we get get Han Solo, you know, when he's kind of a you know a rebel, and you know, I like them both, you know. Is that a, a good? Is that yeah? Wow? That's fair. That no, a, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, you can totally pick both. Different animals. Two different animals. You know. Mm -hmm. What's better, sculpture or painting? You know, same as Star Wars, um, Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Different sides of the same coin, I guess. Fair enough. You you can like something and also like something else. You know, you don't have to like one thing and hate another. You can like them both. You know? No, absolutely. But but that's not the game we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> you must pick one. <laughs> no, both both is fine. <laughs> uh, Rebel. Tabletop or video games? Uh, I I would go with tabletop. I mean, that seems I, like I, a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I like there's some video games I like, but uh, they can't compare it to tabletop experience. No, nothing can compare to a good D and D game. I, I believe is the greatest oh, yeah. game ever created. Amen. Hands down. You know. Well, I, I think they just Paul Cthulhu just won that award or that whatever on uh, what was it Geek and Sundry their top yeah. 100 games ever or something. Yep. There you go. Stefan, did you, I, I'm, more, I'm curious, did you get your D&D start with the Red Box, or was it something um, a little more uh, earlier than that? I didn't. There's something earlier than that? I, I didn't well, uh, do the boxes. I didn't even do modules. Oh, okay. I, got, I started 
with the player's handbook, the dungeon master's guide, and yeah. the, the monster manual. Okay. Know? And probably when they came out. And, Got you. And it said in there, hey, make up your own world, make up your own everything, and that's what I did. So uh, I, I find a lot, I have a gap. I'm different than a lot of other people that I meet in the industry because they all were heavily into playing all these modules, and they look back with fond memories of modules, but I never played any of these modules. I just <laughs> always made up my own stuff in my little cave in my <laughs> corner of New York. You know, it was not in Geneva or Milwaukee, and I only got to know all these these incredible people later in life uh, in the late 90s. After 96, when I started to go to Gen Con, and I started to meet these people, and it opened up this whole wonderful world for me. And, and, and then with the Kickstarters, and I've just met person after person, this incredible, it's just such an incredible thing, meeting guys like, you know, Gary Gygax, Luke yeah. Gygax, Ernie Gygax, all the Gygaxes, you know, and all, all the people, Frank Metzer and Tim Kask, and all these guys who are now my, my drinking buddies. <laughs> and it just blows me away. Cool. I pinch myself, I pinch myself with, you know, hanging out with these guys, you know, and it's just an incredible thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful thing. Mm. Um, but now we're trying to make modules. It's tough. It's really yeah. hard. <laughs> <laughs> they make it look easy. It's so difficult, you know. Yeah. Um, they, they're meant to they help you, and, um, so, and they want to make modules in our, in my world, my homegrown world of Mithras and the city of Eloria. I have those guys now want to make modules in it, and that's incredible. Oh, wow. You know, oh, that's, it so, is very cool. Yeah. Things are coming. Some cool, cool things are coming. That's awesome. Nice. I were just talking half today. In fact, and yeah, things are coming. Hmm. Oh, yeah. we'll have to have you on again when all those things start coming around. You can uh, tell everybody all about it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, DC or Marvel? Wow, I, I don't even know the difference between that. But okay, Nina is mouthing me the words Marvel. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> I, I think that I think that's the, the, been the consensus. Wh which one's which one is Batman? DC. DC. Wh which uh, Superman? That's DC. DC. That's, and, that, and that's Wolverine? it, right there. That's just it. No, oh. Just those two. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So, uh, I like them both. Can I say uh, that? No. You can. You can. You be a rebel again. I like yeah, cool. <laughs> all cool. I. I movies. I like the uh, uh, the X Men. Oh, uh, um, there's not there. There are very few superhero movies I don't like. I, I I get a kick out of everything. You know, there's a little bit here, a little bit there. You like? Mm -hmm. I I don't even mind that guy. What's his name? <laughs> He's the the Batman. The latest oh, Batman. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Me, I don't. I, the latest Batman, by the way, is he good in that? <laughs> Horrible. Oh, <okay. laughs> I didn't see. It, so. I, I like him in his other movies. You know, I don't have anything against them. You know. <laughs> and I was like, a lot of people would hate me now. Is that? No, no I, I'm not a big fan of Ben Affleck either. But you know, eh, to each their own. <laughs> it, it, it was curious choice. Curious choice, but I like these things that kind of bend your mind a little, you know. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm thinking about him not as the Batman, but as Bruce Wayne. I, mean, I could know? see him pulling that off. Yeah. Like it could be a Bruce Wayne, you know. I mean, because mm -hmm. when he when he's Batman, he's got a costume. You don't even see him, right? Yeah. So. Not really. No. I don't know. Yeah. Just is his mindset. No. Nina, <laughs> Nina is is. She's not with me. <laughs> we'll have to interview her next. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Uh, sci more your grave. Yeah. <laughs> Sci-fi or fantasy? 
Oh, wow. That's that's a tough one. But I I personally like fantasy. And okay. I'm more the Conan, the Barbarian, Game yeah. of Thrones. This is stuff that really moves me. Although I love sci-fi too. Like Blade Runner is one of my all-time favorite movies, 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love I love the sci-fi movies, but if I had to go to a desert island and they said, this, which collection are you going to take? I would take the swords and the wizards and the, I would take the fantasy. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a tough one, but yeah. And if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, God. One superpower? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Resistance to the hangover. <laughs> Anti- yeah. Anti-dehydration. <laughs> no brainer. No. That would be, yeah. If I could party all night and get up like it was nothing the next day, that would be the power to have. I, I hadn't considered that one, but that's probably a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to turn it into a Believe t-shirt. Me, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the older I get, it's harder to hang out. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like That's hanging. Sure. Hanging out yeah. is fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's socializing, you socialize, know, and you know, you get, you know. That's I like to unwind. You know, I, I spend a lot of time just either in front of a freaking computer or, or sculpting like thousands and thousands of stones like for mm. hours and hours and then after that you're ready to <laughs> scream. <laughs> you know, you want to go out and meet other human, other mm-hmm. humans and socialize and that seems to always happen in a bar. So, you know. <laughs> uh, nice. But there's the, the distance to the following day, it hurts, so. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. We're working. We gotta cut down on that. <laughs> you know. That's probably well, for the best. They twist your arm, you know. They twist your arm, and then you know, and then you develop a bit of a reputation, and then everyone wants to hang out with you, and then you can't say no, or they get angry, and you know, it's, it's, <laughs> this, you know. it's a but, vicious uh, cycle. <laughs> it is. Not even. Vicious cycle. Yeah. Mm. Well, we uh, we want to thank you for coming on. We we uh, you know. Uh, and there's a lot of that in the dwarf. Yeah. There's a lot of that hanging out and ripping oh, okay. down in the dwarf and I. Oh, nice. Tankards of ale. One cool. one one one, uh, one reviewer. I hope that you get over your alcoholism and. Uh, <laughs> wow. I was really worried. Yeah. It's nice to have such concern. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, crazy. My my mother probably would have liked the film. She probably she would be shaking her head. She would be going, "Dio mio, why do you make this movie?" Oh, Dio mio. She would be very upset with me. Uh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I got to tell it like it is. You know. It's, mm-hmm. it's what it Indeed. is. You know. Yep. I wouldn't. Okay. I, I have no no regrets in life. I, I enjoyed it. I, I do it. I go full steam ahead, and I, you know, I, I work hard and play hard, and and that's uh, just the way I enjoy life, you know. And uh, it's the way it is, you know. Working yeah, out. No, yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. No, uh, no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> No, no regrets. Like in that commercial, they tattoo the wrong thing on the guy's arm. Yep, yep. Out of regrets. <laughs> regrets. No regrets and no regrets. I Fair enough. No, none of them. That's good. Just rats. Hey, that's the way to do it. Yep. You don't leave well, anything on the table. Forward, you know, you always forget the past and think forward and look forward. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, you want it at the end of your life, you want to, like, be broken. Do you want to crawl to the the gates of paradise like barely alive? Well, I mean, I guess you're dead at that point. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, you don't want to be there like, oh my god, I wish I'd done this and I wish I'd done that and oh my god. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, I want to be ready. 
Mm-hmm. I want to be like that. God. I'm ready to go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus. No regrets, you know? indeed. Yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I want to be. I want to be worn out. Mm-hmm. And my my bank account can be drained too. You don't hold on to your money. <laughs> Spend. It. Have fun. Yeah. You spend this stuff. Agreed. That's what my dad said. He's spending all the enjoys. money. My, my brother and I aren't getting anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hell with you guys. You know, when they say stuff like, oh, man, these uh, famous people, they died with, like, it was horrible. They died with no money left in their bank account. I'm like, no, oh, that's the way you do it. Yeah. That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. You don't want to die like an old geezer who hoarded all the money like a dragon. No, no good. People. People fighting no over it. Yeah. Just, just don't tell adventures. your employees that. <laughs> tell them not to watch the interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have an employee. I, I, I'm, I'm at the top. That's, you know. I don't have to answer to anybody. <laughs> That's true. That go. is true. I've always been a, a rebel, so. Mm-hmm. I don't want to work for anyone else. But I did like waitering. I was a waiter for some reason. I liked it. Is hmm. that weird? Well, maybe but, the interaction uh, with people. Yeah, hey, I got to meet people. But I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, I used to like to talk to them. Hey, what do you want? The, uh, the don't order that. This? Order this. <laughs> don't order that. Order the, nope. uh, the linguine. Oh, or something. You know, I... I would talk to them and joke with them, and and they, they I used to get their orders all wrong, but they used to give me because <laughs> I was friendly. I, that's what they most had people an enjoyable would. night, you know. Yeah, we, people uh, remember that. We would talk, and meet so many different people. Yeah. You know, and then everything was always different, and then you never knew exactly how much you were going to make, so there was you know no one. No boring. It wasn't boring. You knew that. Oh, let's see how much I'll make this time. You know, I liked. It. And then you left with a big wad of cash every night. <laughs> big wad of cash, like a gang, like a gangster. Remember to head downtown to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love waiter. Like if one stuff everything fails, I could go back to that. I could, you know, like some people. Like I heard. Remember this guy? He was a, the, this former TSR artist, and he, he gave up everything. He started driving a taxi. Hmm. Huh. Donald A. Terrier. Yeah. He, he ended up in Carbondale driving a taxi. Like, <laughs> and a lot of people don't understand it, but I understand it. I was like, he just made his life really simple. You know, mm-hmm. he got rid of everything. He was like, you know what? I just want to drive and drive people around. And, you know, sometimes there's something to be said for simplicity, mm-hmm. especially in this world now. We have everything is becoming more and more complicated. Everything's like crazy complicated now. But uh, we sometimes I wish I would just unplug everything and move to another country and disappear, and just start over again. I and mean, then everything be simple. Just be a mm-hmm. waiter. Disappear. <laughs> you know, like I, not I yet. Have fantasies about that. Just disappear. Yes, you know, not yet. We need more. We need more dwarven dwarvenite. Yes. One day I disappear. <laughs> if I vanish, like Bilbo, if I ban- vanish one day, to be like, oh, yeah, he's, he's probably waitering somewhere. <laughs> some little, and the some little town in Italy. You know. right. He's got a lot of dungeon pieces. He's running really off the game. Because <laughs> you could throw all that dwarvenite in the suitcase when you go. It would take yeah. about ten. All the miniatures, <laughs> just retire and paint. Yeah. There you go. Do some painting, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, do some painting. All right. Well, everybody okay. should go and check out dwarvenforge.com. You can uh, see all the cool stuff there. You can order whatever sets are currently available. Um, we want to thank you for coming on. We had a, you know, technical issues aside, we had a very good, uh, very good time talking to you. We appreciate it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, we, we, we figured it out. I mean, because technology is becoming more and more difficult all the time. Scary. But we figured it out for now uh, <laughs> until the next crisis happens. You yep. Know? <laughs> 
there's going to be a, a crisis, believe me. At some point, they have self-driving cars. You see that? Mm. Yep. Tesla. And they keep crashing now. Elon, Elon, Elon Musk is one of my, I believe in this guy. He's one of my heroes. But the self-driving cars is the people are starting to crash now, and uh, they, they, the technology is not quite there yet. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to drive. Uh, but uh, I, I was hopeful about the self-driving cars, but I watched this video, and, and you really still have to know how to drive. So yeah. I'm not going to get in one yet. <laughs> you know? Well, we'll see what happens. We'll get there. But, and, you know, what happens if we get attacked and they take down the grid? What if the grid, everything is now attached into the grid? What if they take the grid down? Yeah. I'm starting to think these guys that, Dig holes in their backyards and what do they call it? The, <laughs> the preppers. The preppers. Yeah. preppers. I'm sorry, I think they're not that crazy anymore. You know? There's some validity. They're not that crazy anymore. I, I see it coming. You know? Mm -hmm. It could be a big situation. Well, one well, EMP knocks okay, so everything so out. Nina's whole. Yeah. Let's plug the movie. <laughs> August 5th, <laughs> Torvanot.com. There you go. Yep. Torvanot.com. Cool. We'll add that to the show notes. Plug. <laughs> uh, anything else? Is there anything else he needs to plug? Kid, <laughs> bring your kids. There's a couple of cursing in there here and there, but not too bad. You know. That's bound to happen. It was great to hanging out with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. too. It was great. It was great googling. Googling. Uh, you happy to come on again and. Cool. Absolutely. Talk about the next installment of life. That would be fantastic. Next time you get your, your next Kickstarter up and hey, going. Can people we'll... see this? Yes. We're, we're, still, we're still running live. We, we've got the... Uh... I, I know this is live, but can people like see this later? Yes. Oh, yeah. This will be saved on our YouTube page, and later on tonight I will extract the okay. audio. And I will edit and re-release this as just an MP3 only audio podcast, so people will just be able to listen to it. Yeah, SoundCloud, iTunes. So we can that. tell people to come here and check it out. Yep. yep. Well, we will we will definitely tweet about it. We'll we'll include you in those, so you Great. can uh, retweet those out. Um, you you can find this and and the MP3 on our uh, website. It's <laughs> legendsoftabletop.com. You can uh, hit us up with your questions, comments, and feedback at legendsoftabletop at gmail.com. We're on uh, most of the social media platforms. You can find us on iTunes, uh, Google Play, SoundCloud, Google. You'll find us. We're we're out and about. Uh, like we're, shit. we're everywhere. Yep. Next week we're gonna have. Uh, God, I keep forgetting well, a lot this of game. places. A lot yeah. of places. We're yeah. gonna have uh, collectors and uh, caper the uh, uh, the guys from Blue Heron Games coming on next week. Uh, talk about collectors and capers. Their current Kickstarter. It's going on right now. You should check that out. Um, and I guess that's probably about it. I want to yeah. thank Stefan again for coming on, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Thank you guys. Over and out. <laughs>